The freedom and fun of being on two wheels has from its inception made the road ahead and what lies beyond it an adventure. So much so that literally thousands from far-flung points across the nation get on their bikes and ride long distances to gather at what have become meccas of the brotherhood of the motorcycle. The great thing about these motorcycle rallies is it gives everybody an opportunity to come down to one central location, talk to each other, see everybody else's ideas. They might learn something new about a motorcycle or a product out there that they didn't know was available. It gives them an opportunity to also enjoy some great music, see some great scenery, and hang out with other people that have the same kind of attitudes and free spirit in uh, the world of motorcycling. I think motorcycling has always been a part of popular culture in America. I think in the last three years, more so than ever. This is a renaissance for motorcycling in America right now. I tell them it's summer camp for adult bikers. And that's pretty much what it is, it's like going to camp. Everybody is from the same frame of mind. They want a piece of the, the Harley lifestyle, and it's, it's a great lifestyle. With the celebration of the motorcycle rally being about meeting and mingling with the nicest people, the passion of the event, in motorcycle terms, is all about the ride. It's about getting on the road and riding. Whether you're coming here or whether you trail your bike and ride from here, it's about riding. The oneness between the rider, the motorcycle, the highway, and the environment the wind is in your face, there's nothing like it. It's an age old saying that uh, it's not the destination, it's the ride. I mean, when you talk to people that go all across the country at these types of events, whether it be, you know, Sturgis, whether it be Daytona, the ride out to it is much more of the event. People all over the world love the independence of a motorcycle. There's something about being out there versus being stuck inside a stored and walled in car. You're riding a motorcycle, you see everything, you feel everything. The best thing is you smell everything. I mean, you're out there as part of the environment. It's kind of like flying without the plane. There's something real sexy about the riding position of a motorcycle. When you have your legs stretched out and the handlebars are high, it feels good. You know, and it's just a way to, to enjoy your life a little bit. You get on the bike, it's you, the machine, the open road. Each spring, the two-wheeled wanderlust that gets enthusiasts on their bikes leads to the wide open country of Southern Nevada, where all roads lead to the Laughlin River Run, the largest West Coast motorcycle gathering in the United States. They love the sound of bikes going this way, going that way. That's what they like. They love to hear that. Yeah, they do. That's what they like. I would explain this event as Mardi Gras with motorcycles. This is a, uh, a big party and uh, for motorcycle enthusiasts, and that's not just people who ride motorcycles, uh, those are people who love to be around them. Uh, not everybody who comes to this run, 70,000 strong probably in total, uh, are gonna come on a motorcycle or own a motorcycle. They just like being around the people, like being around the event, like being around the party. There's tattoos, there's vendors, there's uh, custom bike builders, uh, there's great riding around Laughlin. This event really is about the sheer pleasure of coming together to celebrate life and two wheels. 
The beauty of an event like this is for a lot of riders, this is an escape. This is a weekend event where they're taking four days off where they don't have to think about work. They don't have to think about the pressures of the real world. And that's part of the passion, the draw to the motorcycle industry. With that said, they also are out here showing off their wares. They're showing off their new brand new leathers that they have or the lack thereof of leathers in some cases. For anybody that would come here, I'd say it would be the greatest, uh, best embodiment of America as far as for somebody who was looking to be free. This is free. Okay. This is free. Indeed, the most enticing part of the river run is getting out into the scenic Sonoran Desert. Well, every event has its own flavor, and I think that goes with the terrain. You have the Black Hills, the Sturgis. When you get out here in the desert, there's no place like this in the country. You get back east, you don't have these opportunities with these long stretches of road and these vast vistas. So uh, every event takes on its own flavor because of the terrain. The riding terrain around Laughlin is excellent, so you can literally get that warm evening riding feeling that just is so charismatic. During the day, you can actually get out of the desert, head for the mountains, where you gotta throw on full leathers. It's really a wonderful uh, riding area. Perhaps the most distinctive aspect of the local landscape is the sight, sound, and sheer presence of the Colorado River, which flows mightily through Laughlin, making it a recreational paradise. where the desert meets the water's edge, is for many the best place to set up camp and settle in for the week. Just what goes on amongst thousands of like-minded people who converge on a small town for a motorcycle rally? I think one of the things that uh, people get involved in the sport, they don't only like the bikes, uh, they like the people who are involved in the bikes. They come to these events because they can quickly find something in common. And what they find in common is a baseline, is a love of motorcycles, but then they find a universe and host of other things, and they make fast friendships. I think all those people are all attracted to the event for the opportunity, to be honest, to meet one another. The guy from Hungary is looking forward to meet the guy from British Columbia, and he's looking to talk to the guy from Anchorage, and he's looking to talk to some locals right here from Nevada. We're a type of people that are, have a sense of loyalty, uh, uh, a sense of country. There's a lot of Vietnam vets here. There's a lot of Korean War vets here and uh, some people that have a very deep heritage to this type of uh, uh, kind of a freedom. We're all independent people, we're can-do kind of people. So the bikers do look out for each other. If somebody's broke down on the side of the road, you, you have to pull over and try and help. Common bond here is motorcycles. I believe, you know, mus musicians probably hang out with musicians. I know artists hang out with artists. You know, and everybody uh, watches out for one another. The beauty of the motorcycle industry for me and what's drawn me to it is the fact that it seems to be a melting pot regardless of uh, what level or layer of life that you're from. If you're a motorcyclist in an event like this and it shows in the feeling of being part of something bigger than what we are with regards to our class and where we are back home. If you're a biker, even if you want to be a biker, because you're here you've come to a community of people and, and a way of life. It, these people just don't ride bikes and then it's over. It's a way of life. It's not uh, uh, just a moment in your life.
Casino Boulevard may be the strip where the tribe beats its drums, but out in the Sonoran Desert, other destinations become part of the instant community. The bikers love to go over to Oatman. Oatman is an old cowboy town. It's got that Hollywood, the movie set type atmosphere. The mules used to be used for mining, and uh, when the mining stopped, the mules come into town and the bikers feed them. It's a little biker community for four days. It's a big thing. They park everywhere up and down the street, but Oldman is so close-knit, everybody just becomes instant family there. Actually, Oakland uh, became a reality back in the 1800s. This was a, uh, the richest gold mining district in the state of Arizona. Once a year, we get the uh, the Harley Run, the River Run, out of uh, out of Laughlin, and all the scooter people love to come up here and run Route 66. Ten o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the afternoon. After five o'clock, we sit around and listen to the stop signs rest. There's only one. It's not too hectic. Back in Laughlin, the annual Miss Laughlin beauty pageant is about to get underway.
You wonder what she's gonna do in the swimsuit competition now, right? So do I. So do I. How are you? I'm doing great. You are doing wonderfully. What is your favorite motorcycle accessory and why? My sunglasses. Your, sun, your, your sunglasses are your favorite motorcycle accessory. I got these Harley Davidson sunglasses and they keep the bugs out of my face. You need to be right with a dude with a windshield. But it's Christina Haley, third place. Christina. I take it there's some displeasure in the room. Oh, come on. They had a rough time down here judging this. Second place, Don Martino. Don. style and the motorcycle go hand in hand and being part of the river run is all about seeing and being seen. This is personal expression. As much as dress is personal expression, as much as hairstyle is personal expression, I'm a good one to speak for that. They're showing off what they ride, how they ride, and how they portray this whole image of the motorcycle industry. Watching one another's cycles and seeing what you've done to it is, a, is the epitome of a mutual admiration society. Uh, I think uh, you could, I can look at somebody's bike and I can love what they've done to it and they can look at mine and say, I think that's killer what you did to yours. And, and maybe that's going to influence what I do in the future, maybe that's going to influence what they do in the future, but that exchange might build a friendship and boy, maybe that's why we're rolling through it right now. You know, tattoos are very popular these days. The biker attire, the leathers, the whole fashion industry actually has gained fuel from the Harley motorcycle industry. They love to show off the bike. Yeah. They love it. Laughlin is filling up with bikers and enthusiasts by the thousands. Let's hit the streets and see what it's all about. They do, they get up all weird hours of the day and they rub up their motorcycle. 
they get a charge out of it because they know the people won't hear it. else has, what's out on the market, and you think that going to the mall you spend a lot of money, you spend a lot of money here. Anyway, after 22 years, this is the poker run for the uh, uh, Saturday ride, and it starts here. You register for it. The map is on the back uh, with the instruction of where to go. You draw your first card here. You draw a second card at the second stop, the have a by park, third one at the dealership, and then the last two are drawn back here. And at four o'clock, we award all the prizes. Owning and seriously riding motorcycles requires lots of different stuff. And at the River Run, the industry with all its products is front and center. Well, I've been around this industry for about 15 years now, and I've seen the trends come and go. It's the very creative people in the aftermarket industry that are constantly developing new products right when you think you've seen it all, they come out with something that just blows you away and is, is totally new and, and it pushes the edge of the envelope, makes us all think a little more. about custom chrome and what we've done is we produce products that Harley Davidson hasn't produced for 30 years. We keep that passion alive, that evolution, that continuum of the motorcycle that continues to evolve uh, throughout the marketplace. The key with this industry and what keeps it alive is the individuality of the industry, the individuality of the vehicle itself. Yeah. This is good looking stuff, but that's not the ultimate stuff. The granddaddy of the industry, Harley-Davidson Motorcycles, with over 100 years to its credit, was on hand at the River Run. What you see behind me is the Harley-Davidson demo fleet, which uh, attends a lot of motorcycle, various motorcycle rallies throughout the United States. Uh, this gives the current customer, the potential customer, an opportunity to ride the new uh, 04 models and see the changes, refinements that's been made. 
One of the things we do here with the demonstration rides is we give people an opportunity to actually take the bike out on the road and ride it. You know, instead of just looking at it, maybe sitting on it, they can get behind the handlebars and actually get the feel of it. These are all 2004 models from the, uh, the Sportster over to the V-Rod. We've got a couple of the Buell motorcycles that are the American uh, sport bike. Well, what we've got with Harley-Davidson and Buell American motorcycles, we offer, offer a wide variety of models, which gives everybody from the older cruisers to the young people that like to get out on the sport bikes an opportunity to go ride. Well, I've come to every Laughlin run, every one, I've never missed one, but for the last four or five years, I've wanted to ride that V-Rod, so this year I'm gonna do it. I think it's great. We're gonna ride the new Sportster 04, wanna see how that rubber mount feels. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come out and ride all these new bikes and uh, test them out, see which ones you like. And as you can see, people come from all walks of life. Uh, it's Harley Davidson motorcycles, non-gender specific. So uh, you got men, women. You got uh, you even got the kids looking over here on the side at them. But I've talked to some women that ride their own bikes. Maybe they met their lifelong partner who's riding a Harley. I think for a long time it was the perception that only it was a male's pastime. Um, the bikes were too big; you can't ride them. Um, but that's definitely changing, something that people are, um, all people can participate in, especially women. I like the speed and just the freedom that you can go kind of wherever you want to, and just spending time with my boyfriend and hanging out, something that we can do together and both enjoy. I have two motorcycles. Um, I've been riding since I was 16. You're under your own power. You have a lot of uh, expression where you don't have to be confined with somebody else. I mean, it's one thing in common that everybody can do, and it's easy to do. At the core of the River Run tribe are the bikes they ride. Even when parked, their presence commands attention. And with a twist of the wrist, these personal magic carpets become mechanical high art while still providing the rider with the utility of basic transportation. The motorcycle itself really evolved from the whole revolution of personal transportation. And from it, it began as a vehicle to conduct business with. And then this whole movement of this recreational vehicle, the fact that the motorcycle then became the recreation. Well, the motorcycle is a mode of transportation. It's an exciting vehicle. It's an economical form of transportation. I got a bike here that does 130 miles an hour, still gets 45 miles to the gallon. So outside of the fun factor, it is an economical, fuel-efficient, environmentally friendly uh, mode of transportation. The motorcycle has evolved from a bicycle, basically, to today, five, six, seven, even $15,000 paint jobs, two, $3,000 rims, all kinds of exotic frames. The style of the bike, it really captivates the buyer. You know, let's face it, we're talking about thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar motorcycles here and more. I think with the cruiser, it gives that feeling of sitting back into the vehicle. You're not over the top of the vehicle, you're not crouched over, you sit within it. You become a part of that vehicle. Our motto here at the Golden Nugget is and has been for many years, live free and ride. And I think probably freedom is expressed in each and every person's motorcycle.
and I guess, you know, you look at it and you think, wow, they're really all different. They're really, maybe they look different, but when you focus at the engine, it is the Harley-Davidson V-Twin. You know, this company is starting their 101st year, and I know they've got plans to do some great machines for the future. A V-Twin was built in 1903. Every time a person walks up and looks at a bike, they look at the heart, the V-Twin motor. They're powerhouses, they're loud. It's a good looking V-Twin motor. Fortunately for us, it's amazing for me to go all across the country in the events that I do and to talk to people that are within other industries and for them to see uh, this somewhat primitive design that we're still working with, the V-Twin configuration, where there are other motorcycles that are out there, other vehicles that are out there that are far superior. What is the draw to this V-Twin? And I believe that it's back to the whole roots of our industry and the fact that it's about this simplistic turn the key, get out in the wind and ride this vehicle. The biggest thing that's associated with the Harley-Davidson motorcycle with the V-Twin vehicle is the sound of it, the passion that comes along when someone fires up the bike and blasts by on a, on a Harley wide open on the freeway. That's, that's something that just gets your blood running. I think, we're, I think what, also, what also is key to the evolution of the industry, what's the next steps is, regardless of how technical, regardless of how advanced our industry becomes, I believe that the rider of today and the rider of tomorrow will still be drawn to that very simplistic, basic configuration of the V-Twin engine. I think that's the popularity and the success that has driven this industry, the V-Twin cruiser market, for years and will for years to come. Today, the golden age in motorcycling drives the creation of unique custom bikes. At the Laughlin River Run, the importance of these machines is illustrated in the tremendous array of handcrafted, rideable art. It's easy to see why custom bikes lead the edge of the expressionism in motorcycling. The great bike build-off exhibited creations that just wowed visitors with their artistic interpretation and whose historical and technological influences nearly span the first hundred years in motorcycling. Here is a machine that at first glance appears to be an antique. The pre-war-like theme starts with a hardtail and traditional saddle, and with the Springer front, continues the classic feel. But look at the brake design, long narrowing tank and wide rear end. It's utterly modern. Remember the stripped-down Harleys in the motorcycle gang movies? Well, here's a modern version expressed to the T in this bike built by Exile Cycles. The primitive drag bike style hardtail with a fat front tire and brushed monochrome-like finish really makes a statement. And a current rave, the increasingly ultra-fat rear end, was played out by this creation built by UltraCycle. The long and flowing Qinggong, built by Hot Match Cycles, also sports the fat rear end. And yes, the most popular style bike these days, the Chopper, is powerfully represented at the Great Bike Build-Off in Laughlin with this creation built by Joe Martin. Around the corner, the custom cruiser Cornucopia continued with the Chop Shop Tour, which displayed their signature custom machinery. Across Casino Drive, the annual custom bike show is attracting a crowd with yet another exhibition showcasing what's hot in today's hand-built bikes.
Well, here we are at the uh, annual Laughlin River Run at the Custom Bike Show. Behind me, there's probably 50 to 75 custom bikes. These motorcycle shows are just continuing to raise the bar of the quality and uh, what's hot, what's, what's new. Coming to this show just shows you what there is today. And by next year, what's hot today will be out because everything is always changing. The bikes here at this show range anywhere from $100,000 and up down to a bike that is purchased as a production bike and modified, painted, and, and uh, added to from there. As for the builders that build the custom bikes here, speaking on their behalf, this is the place to come to promote and to show your product and to get it out in front of the people and let them see and show it off and let things happen from there. Laughlin's stature over its 22-year history has made it a sought-after venue of exposure for aspiring new talent. Bike builder Monty Wickersham is wide-eyed about being part of this year's show. I'm from Boise, Idaho. I own custom bike builders down. And uh, bringing bikes to these shows, I've got four in this event uh, that I had hands-on in building. Just to come here and show these bikes is my dream. Last night and yesterday, we cruised the strips and people just noticed us. We were in a pack of like six choppers and it's a lot of fun. The, the statement that you make when you roll in and just people stand, there was rows of people on both sides of the road just clapping for us when we were revving our engines. It was great. Well, in building custom motorcycles, the what I use is Paul Yoppe, Jesse James, Trotta, Martin Brothers, all their stuff, and I, I do assembly of that. I'm not really into the major fabrication of bikes. I like to look at a bike from behind and I like it to be real narrow. I run minimum wires. I don't run any speedometers or blinkers. I run a brake light and a headlight, of course. We get the tank up a little higher. We get our bars parallel with our shoulders and we like sitting down into them. It's just like the bike is wrapped around you, but that's how we build them now. Yeah, these bikes are full-blown customs, but they're ridden daily. We build our bikes to ride. Amongst the fully exotic six-figure customs, we spotted what was highly unusual, a radically altered Harley Sportster. There are lots of big builders all over the country, but you can still build a nice bike in your own backyard or in your garage like we did. My sons and I bought a used Sportster, took it apart, and decided to make a radical Sportster out of it. That's what we did. We started with a 99 Sportster that I bought used for $5,500. It only had 3,300 miles on it, so it was in great condition. It had a few odds and ends of chrome on it, so that was a good start. And we figured I would take it apart, stretch the frame, make it a soft tail, and go a little deeper into making it a little bit more radical with a 45 degree rake and some custom wheels. Unlike the big V-twins, you can't buy anything optional for a sports They're very, very rare. It's difficult to get a frame. It's very difficult to get uh, speed parts or chrome accessories. As we got into it, we realized more and more of this stuff is going to have to be manufactured. One of the most difficult things to do is we stretched the frame so far, we couldn't get a belt to fit the back. So we got contacted Gates Rubber in Denver, Colorado, and they custom built a 162 belt, 14 millimeter. It's the only one like it in the world. Also, when we wanted to put dual carbs on a Sportster, all the manufacturer says it can't be done. You cannot put dual carbs on a Sportster. So we contacted Edelbrock and their engineering department, spent a couple of weeks with us and helped us fabricate a custom dual carb manifold for our Sportster, along with some 34 millimeter carburetors, and it runs like a dream. Anyways, our, our backyard design and uh, four month project wound up taking very close to eight months plus. And now the bike's finished, this is our second show and we're here in Laughlin and really a fantastic response. 
to our finished product. Uh, we're a little uh, upside down about the fact that they put us in a very, very uh, high class show. They put us in the class with the $100,000 motorcycles and although we're flattered with that idea, we realize we really don't have enough of a motorcycle to compete with the big boys. But we really are honored that they chose our bike and entered it in the big time show. Building the motorcycle was only one part of it. The extra added fun is the tinkering and the tweaking it and doing the little odds and ends in your garage at night to make it even more what you want. And I can guarantee you, if you bought a motorcycle and you started playing with it, you'd wind up having as much fun as the rest of us. It really is a great experience to buy it and party and put one of these together. As the Laughlin Custom Bike Show illustrates, the artistic signature of the custom bike is truly as varied as the builders themselves. From the can-do attitude of the backyard family team to the media-driven celebrity builders, the artistry of bike builders seems to have no limit. I think the builders get uh, influenced by one another while they're here. So you come here and look at what other people are doing with their cycles, you can get ideas for your own cycle. Bikes are kind of extensions of people's personalities and they, when they build them. Some guys choose to make them lower, sleeker, uh, make the lines follow the rims a little bit better. Some guys a little more simpler, you know, standard front ends, maybe flat paint. I mean, you can just tell a lot about the person and their bikes. The pyramid of builders today goes back to such innovators as Arlen Ness. And here at Laughlin, he makes himself very accessible to fans. When custom bike building was strictly an outlaw potion, Arlen was creating what today's industry is built on. Arlen's creation, Loud Ness, was on display. Back when we started, a chopper, we considered a chopper was uh, a rigid frame with the uh, short springer and ape hangers and a 21 inch front wheel. And then of course now is the new age choppers and they're all tall bikes with uh, the long tanks and uh, the big tires and stuff like that. Actually, it's, it's pretty interesting now. It's, uh, you can actually ride these things cross country if uh, you get all the right parts. It'll, it'll be uh, long, low bikes again, I think. Uh, with just more trick stuff, all the uh, CNC and all the everything hidden, and that's where I see it's going to go after the chopper thing kind of kind of fades. Today, Arlen's son Corey is himself a major force in custom bike building, as evidenced in this creation, Blingness. Well, in general, you know, motorcycles are really a, a simple machine. They're not, they're not that, uh, 
complex. I think I think the industry will need to do something different because guys get tired of looking at the same thing. And I know that's one thing that we've always done is we got, you know, we might get a bike done and it's really cool and we're proud of it and we think it's really cool. But you know, three months later you're like, you know, you're you're tired of looking at it. You're ready to try something new. So uh, there's a lot of guys doing great stuff out there and. Uh, you know, with the help of all these talented builders out in the industry, it's uh, things are going to change, and it's going to change. The things are probably going to work better and and go faster and stop better. And uh, you yeah. know, if you have an imagination, you can do almost anything with a motorcycle. Part of the new guard of builders is Jesse Rook. While having only been building custom bikes for two years, he has attracted a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, I grew up uh, riding motorcycles and bicycles. I started riding when I was three years old, and for me. These bikes are just visions of the things that I've done in my past. Building a bike is giving me and others the freedom to share a little bit of our background and stuff. When we build a bike, um, we're looking for an emotion. The way of paint on the bike flows, the design, uh, the scheme, the colors, all that comes into play to get the effect out of the bike. My wheels are unique to me in that I'm the only one with an offset single-sided rear wheel that's rigid. My bikes don't even have a swing arm, it's a rigid single-sided bike, which is, is totally unique to the industry. My bikes also have a unique single-sided front wheel. You know, a motorcycle industry is a really tight-knit family. I mean, everyone is really into bikes. We're here for one thing, the bikes. I build a bike for cruising around. I want to have a good time and relax with my friends and we go out on Sunday and ride around and that's what I built the bike for. What these builders have created expresses the essence about motorcycling's tradition. They are loud, overpowered, stripped down, they look fast and attract attention. But just what makes a bike a custom? I think the customization of the motorcycle is so prevalent because of the simplistic nature of the motorcycle itself. The ability to take this simple blank canvas and create this art piece of your own. I think today um, a lot of the people that buy custom bikes enjoy having the bike, just polishing it, working on it, going on a ride with their friends to the local pub, you know, just step, stepping back and looking at their bike and having people admire it. I think people really enjoy that. I don't think practicality really enters into it these days. It doesn't matter if you can ride the thing down the street. I don't think the average person even cares. It's just a rolling piece of art, and it's really an ego thing nowadays, I think. Just as individual as any vehicle is, so is the configuration of the sheet metal, of the paint, the beauty and the sensuality that comes into play with a vehicle. I think if you look at the styling of the vehicle, how many times have you heard how they compare a motorcycle to a human figure? The motors are exposed, you have to work around the motors, they're all hidden on a car, a car can just be covered up with sheet metal, you know, they're stylish, but for a motorcycle you have a lot of exposed elements, and uh, in dealing with them, to make the flow good and, and consistent and smooth lines, you have certain parameters that you have to work around, I think it's a little more challenging than it is with a four-wheel vehicle. You know, if you, look at a, if you look at a bike now in any one of the events that you go to, you'll see front ends that are thick and, and, and bulky. You'll see another front end that's extremely thin and narrow. And, and from it, it'll evolve into the rest of the vehicle. Same thing goes with the engine configuration. And then rolling back through the vehicle, the combination of wheels that you can incorporate with it as far as, you know, wide ones, thin ones. The uh, other things is the types of polishes, the types of finishes that you can have on your vehicle. In a showy type of environment like at the Laughlin River Run today, you'll see a lot of polished bolt engine transmission, wheels, everything has to be shiny on a lot of the vehicles that are out there. I think for the average person, the paint job is a very important thing because they can individualize their bike and it's 
very unique avenue for a person to, you know, make his bike really look like it's something of an extension of his own personality. They say the future is what happens while you're living your life. At the River Run, if you look close enough, you may see where the future is going. I think the future of motorcycling, the future of the customization of motorcycling is really going back and it, we're gonna see a, a resurgence of the real naked vehicles. It's gonna take us from this fat pro street, 300 tire, 360 tire, 250 tires, which are prevalent with a chopper, into a more simplistic, bobber, stripped down, street fighter type vehicle. Right now, of course, the choppers are hot, and I look for them to be popular for, I would, at least another 10 years. It'll, it'll be uh, long, low bikes again, I think, uh, with just more trick stuff, all the uh, CNC and all the, everything hidden, and that's where I see it's gonna go after the chopper thing kind of, kind of fades. I think the industry will need to do something different because guys get tired of looking at the same thing. There's a lot of guys doing great stuff out there and uh, you know, with the help of all these talented builders out in the industry, it's, uh, things are gonna change and it's gonna change. The things are probably gonna work better and, and go faster and stop better and uh, I'm sure everybody will just kind of keep working at it. Daytime at the River Run with all its diversions is just a prelude for act two the nightlife. When the sun goes down in, in Laughlin under this kind of an environment, uh, there is a buzz in the air, and uh, for good reason. Uh, there's all kinds of excitement. We got 38 Special behind us. We got every, every killer bike on the planet up and down the street. And the, uh, the visuals are pretty nice as well, as far as the way the fashion uh, aspect goes. You know, then throw a little, uh, a little uh, booze in there, and we're, I tell you, it's just the, the spice you're looking for. The speed part of riding is always just a throttle twist away. And since you meet the nicest people on a motorcycle, the street drags at the River Run have become the appropriate takeoff and landing field for speedsters. This is it. Where else could you go for $2? Burn your tire to the ground without being pulled over for a speed ticket for $2. This is all charity event. All this donated help, everybody does their job. It's nine years now, money goes to boys and girls clubs. The city park there in Needles has some things that we help buy. Uh, skate park, basketball court. Uh, like I said, it's just nine years worth of fun.
I've looked fast. I guarantee I ain't fast. Yeah, a lot of guys, they put a lot of money into their bikes for performance. You know, and then if you don't have the opportunity for a dyno at home, bring it out here and top it up next to another bike, see what happens. Lane one had a 947 and lane two had a 962. I just rode out here from LA the day before yesterday and all my friends talked me into running my bike, so what the hell? There, there's always this apprehension. You know, you can bring it out here and you race it, whether it's here or the dyno drags or something like that, you run the risk of breaking it. Now luckily I got friends with trailers. It's not hooking it at all in first gear. There's absolutely no traction at all. So I just uh, softened the rear suspension a little bit and I'm gonna let a little more air out of the tire. Maybe if I can warm this tire up and get it to hook up next run. Uh, it, it, it's just fun. It's a real adrenaline rush, no matter what you're doing here. But like when I'm riding alone, the, the bike is the closest thing I get to like meditative state. Back in Laughlin, the popular leather and lace fashion show is ready to fly.
After you return home from the river run, get off your bike and shake the dust off. Just what sticks with you? Well, it's just such a, um, a feel-good sport. You know, motorcyclists will wear their Harley shirts and, and go back to, into the work world, and then you'll see somebody else with a Harley shirt, and you'll strike up a conversation. And, and uh, the love for motorcycling transcends into every other aspect of your life. It's just such a fun, feel-good thing. How could you not let it consume your life? I, I don't know how to describe it for a person that's never done it before. Once you've done it, you know about it and you never leave it. You become uh, one with your universe and meditate in, in that state. If you get on a motorcycle, it will be the best experience you've ever had and it'll follow you for the rest of your life. You'll never feel the freedom and the expression of freedom in any other aspect of entertainment.